Welcome, Greg. Thank you, Fred. Thanks for coming in today. It's great to be here, mate. I thought we'd start with telling us who Glenn Steele is. Tell us where, where you've come from and how you got into the, the Labor Party in Parliament. Fantastic. Thanks, Fred. I actually grew up in Langford in Perth's eastern suburbs, uh, son of uh, a truckie, son of a nurse. Uh, I left school in 77, went to work for Ansett Ridgeways as a furniture removalist, wanted to follow my dad's footsteps. I wanted to be a truck driver as well. Uh, I did. I spent 16 years with Ansett Ridgeways, mm. 11 of those years, Fred, as an owner driver running road trains through to the Kimberley and why Northern Territory. Become, why did you want to leave that and become a politician? <laughs> Peaceful well, life. You can hear my knees when I go to stand okay. up, mate. That'll give you a fair idea. Uh -huh. uh, I just wanted to, I actually wanted to be involved in things, and Fred, from a very early age, um, I was uh, very prominent within uh, my work site, mm -hmm. union delegate, and then I was given the chance in 1991 with a three-year-old daughter and a six-month-old son to hang up my riding boots. Couldn't wait to come off the road. The Transport Workers Union gave me a fantastic opportunity to come and work for them. And I just saw that as a next progression in my life that I wanted to take my, my work within my own work site to helping others into the trade union movement, of which I had 14 fantastic years. And then I was given the opportunity, Fred, to ask if I wanted to run for the Senate. And hence that was... Uh, 2005? Was that uh, right? 2005 I was elected. 2003 I, I stood for pre-selection. Okay. I was given the blessing of the party. They got in behind me. Hence, as they say in the classics, Fred, the rest is history. Now you're a Labor politician because we have Matthias Cormann on a bit on the show and he's from the Liberal side. And um, we've had them on. We've had Louise Pratt on as well. And the biggest issues at the moment, how do you read them, Glenn? When you go out to your electorate, the city of Perth is where you live. What are people saying to you? What do they find most important at the moment to them? Uh, asylum seekers is probably the number one issue that I'm confronted with on an ongoing basis. Um, uh, well, in what way? Do they think we're not doing enough? Well, Fred, it's, it's amazing. I'm first generation Australian, mate. I'm, pr I'm very uh, proud of my Italian yep. heritage. Um, but I find... So I. Yeah, well, we've got a lot in common there, mate. But I find the frustrating part is yep. that the most venom that comes towards the issue of asylum seekers comes from those mm. who have come to this wonderful country from another country. And, and I find that absolutely incredible because if I had my way, mate, we would have far more people in this yep. great country. What a fantastic place to live. So asylum seekers is very topical. That's the main bar. Barbecue cruncher, the mining tax, and Fred, mm -hmm. I'm very happy to tell you where I sit on the mining okay. tax, and of course, carbon tax is very, very tough. The mate. carbon tax has been a hard one for the, your party. I, mean, I was talking to you off air before. It must be so hard to go out there and promoting a tax at this time. It, it is, but what we have to understand, Fred, this is not about us. This is about our children and their children. This is something that we need to be doing for the future. Mm. And I get very, very annoyed from when I see a majority of people from a generation who had free education, free university, and they take offence because we want to leave something better for the next generation. So what's happening with this carbon tax? Because we know so, the story so far, the polls aren't looking very good for Labor. The mm -hmm. Prime Minister's sort of on the nose in some parts. The carbon tax hasn't been the biggest thing, the easiest thing for her to sell. How do you think it's going to pan out in Parliament? Because you've got a few of the independents now. You've got a fantastic new Greens uh, committee in the, the Senate. You've got, what, 10 Green senators now? We do. How is it going to pan out? What's going to happen? I think, Fred, when, the longer we get an opportunity to put forward the benefits of the carbon tax, and let's not forget, too, let's not forget the benefits of taxation reform. And one of the great things, Fred, as a father of a 24-year-old student who can only earn up to $6,000 now and then get taxed, the tax fee threshold goes out to 19400 One million Australians, Fred, one million will not have to put it a lodger tax return. So when we start looking at the compensation of who gets covered and who doesn't, when we actually have the opportunity to get our message out, mm. explain it, and Australians can ask us all the questions and we can sit there and go through it, I am absolutely convinced the more truth that gets out, the more transparency and honesty people will accept. The Do you think tax. it's been sold well so far? I, I mean, think without criticising the Prime yes, Minister. Yes, no, no, Fred, think? look, it's been very, very tough because the Prime Minister announced that we would go to a carbon tax back in, I think, November last year. Tony Abbott has had the mother of all scare mm. campaigns to run for the last, what's that, uh, eight, nine months. He's using one-liners, a lot of you know, not truths. But they seem to be working, don't oh, they? Oh, because be people are hearing the one side, and we haven't had the opportunity yeah. to say actually how much it would cost, $23 a mm. tonne, not some of the nonsense that we've heard. Fred, petrol's not included. Tony Abbott was out there loud and clean saying the world was going to collapse because petrol was going to go up six cents a litre. Mm. Every single statement Tony Abbott made has not been true. 
And the trouble is, Fred, that he's not being held to account. And as soon as people start understanding that Tony Abbott's plan is to tax every single household $720, we're compensating households. Nine in every ten households. You're talking about the direct action plan. The direct action has. plan. He couldn't even tell us how many trees do, he would plant. Do you think, um, Glenn, a hard sticking point here? I'm asking you to be honest. You don't have to answer this. I'll always be the, honest with the, you, Fred. The Prime Minister. Uh, we saw the lady in the shopping centre confronting the Prime Minister and said to her, "You lied to us before the election." Honestly, do you think that they, that may have stalled the discussion on carbon tax? It seemed for a while that's all we dwelled on. No matter what the Prime Minister says. Everybody keeps coming back to that lie. She lied to us before the election. Do you think it's been hard? Look, it has been very tough, Fred, because we know what the Prime Minister said, but we have to remember that we are the party that actually tried to get the emissions trading system through the Senate. I've sat in the Senate for seven years now, mate. I watched the way the Greens and those two independents dismantled any opportunity we had to put forward a credible scheme. We even had the majority of businesses on mm. site. It has been tough, but we're in a brand new world now, Fred. You know, we are in a How is parliament. the new world? Tell me about, how do you feel as a member of parliament looking at the House of Reps and also the Senate? Frustrating. Why is that? It's, look, it's, it's very frustrating. You've got some wonderful independents there, but... Uh, Are they hard yeah. to work with? Is no, no, no. Look, Nick, Nick Xenophon is, is um, uh, very easy to get along with. Uh, we all know where Nick comes from. Nick is a negotiator. The previous senator, we had a Victorian family first senator. And Fred, may I say, first up on your show, let's hope we never have to put up with someone else from family first. That mm. was very difficult. Controversial. Uh, oh, controversial. The bloke was on another planet. You know, he would flip flop, he'd lock his door, you could never get to him. It's tough, we've got the, the 10 Greens in there and, and how stable the Greens are. Are they Time dictating to Labor what they need? Is it hard? Is it, be honest with me, is the party having to do deals with the Greens now that where they never thought they'd have to if they were oh, a majority? We have to deal with everyone when we haven't got the numbers spread. Mm. You know, and whether it was whether we're dealing with independents or whether we're dealing with the Greens, it's an ongoing feast. Do you it's like working reality. with the Greens? Would you um, prefer to be working with somebody else? I would prefer to be working with a lot more Labor yeah. senators. Exactly. It's hard. It's challenging, Fred. But we're up for a challenge, mate. What are you doing in the next few weeks? What are you spending your time? Because I know sure. you charity Sh work. Sure, sure. Uh, I've actually just got back from my charity work. I've been in the Kimberley. Uh, I've also been up on the Dampier Peninsula doing some Aboriginal work that mm -hmm. I, I really thoroughly enjoy. I've had the, the Environment Minister in the broom and the top end. That's been uh, very interesting. I'm actually uh, having the pleasure of getting three days in Perth and then I'm jetting off to Queensland to open the Australian Furniture Removals Association conference. They still invite me every year and I'm very happy it's to do that. fantastic you still keep your links with people in the community. Uh, Fred, look, I still do because what a lot of people don't know is two weeks of every year I actually tra trade in the, uh, the uh, dancing clothes and I put on shorts, boots and a Keys Brothers removal shirt and I go back to my trade and I do two weeks of charity work which I donate to the Darling well, Range Sports College. I mate. think that's a wonderful thing you do. Give him a big round of Good applause you. please. Thanks, Fred. Glenn Stell. Good on you, mate. Thank you. He is of course Thanks. a Labor Senator and we hope to have him back on the couch many more times because I'm looking forward to seeing you up against Matthias. Well, we what, need mate. someone that can keep him down. Oh, I look forward to it because we do it every sitting day of every week. Mate. Well, Matthias thank and you I are much. good exchanges of uh, uh, compliments to each like other. Like I said, we've got a lot of hard workers in the parliament and uh, Glenn's one of them. Thank you very much for being on the show today. Glenn, we'll talk to you some more down the track. We need to take a break on the couch because I know we've got more coming up after this. Thank you.